Hello everybody. Um so I just wanted to put up this video before doing some like regular scheduled programming stuff. I know I've been away for a bit, sorry about that. But I just every once in a while I just need a little break from uploading and planning videos and stuff, but um I really wanted to go to the Toronto Comics Art Festival because this year the special guest that was gonna be there was Junji Do. And for those of you who know me well enough, um, you know that I love Junji Ito. I have a huge collection of his of his manga. Um, and now that I have a new camera, I didn't really want to miss the opportunity to go. I went to Toronto and I stayed for two days and a night. So uh, the first day he did the, the live draw and the talk. And then the second day he did a signing. Um, the signing they gave wristbands to the first hundred people it started at nine o'clock or i believe it was ten o'clock that they started giving out the wristbands i got there at about 6 30. woke up at six got ready and i, I got there at about 6 30 or so it was no like no joke at 6 30 there were more than 100 people there at that time i already left my airbnb so i thought okay for some events they have rush lines so that the first like maybe 10 people or so could come and i was i think i was within that 10 person bracket but um it was it was too late like apparently people have been camping out since one that morning like 1 a.m in toronto cold on the streets in front of the library since one i i thought 6 30 was pretty good apparently it wasn't it was just a mess. So something that I ended up getting instead was actually an autographed book. Um, they gave it to the first 40 people within the line after the first 100 people went in to do the signing. And I was in that line. So I ended up getting a signed book of his. And you could choose whichever book you wanted. Um, I was a little surprised to see that he had did Frankenstein. So I figured I would pick this one up. But I also got his smashed book. They had a signed one for this one also, but um, I had already bought it. Um, so I already bought a book and then they offered the, the signature one. So I ended up getting Frankenstein because this was kind of like the next on my reading list. Uh, another thing that I picked up, I picked up the event poster uh which is designed i don't know if you can see it but illustration by jinji ito um i picked this one up and i got a free poster because i brought the smash the smashed manga um and i i bought it pretty quickly i bought it as soon as i walked through the door um so yeah that's basically what this video is going to be about. Uh, this was a bittersweet trip. <laughs> I was extremely disappointed I couldn't make it to the um, to the autograph uh, to the autographing, and I waited outside for four hours. It was it was rough, but uh, I was able to see the live drawing, and I was able to get that interview all on tape. Um, so here is my journey. I hope you guys enjoy it because it was crazy. <laughs> okay. Bye. Your visa is in the key area step over to the customer services and gate 53.
from there. When is enough enough? Yeah, what, what is like, what you're gonna do is all of this, right? Like, mm. Thank you all for coming to see Genji Ito's live drawing session. <laughs> so, Ito Sensei, I heard that you have an illustration maybe that's prepared that you'd like to, to draw with a little bit today. So you just use tissue to wipe that away. You don't use like one of those really fancy feather brushes that they have for eraser shavings, or? She was really bad at me. <laughs> <laughs> 
And she just kind of showed me just the whites of her eyes. <laughs> Um, so when you see her with just the, like so much of the whites of her eyes in the in the comic, it's just my impression of her. She doesn't really look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever drawn something that was so scary or so disturbing that you were like, no, this is too much. I can't show anybody this drawing. It's too scary even for me. Yeah, if I could draw something like that, that would be great. boxes and also the kids at the same time. Um, then, uh, you know, I take the kids home with this delicious little lunches. And we eat supper, and it's a bath. Um, and with supper and the bath and everything else, usually I can't really do any work from about 6 o'clock in the evening until around 9 o'clock at night I can get back to work. And then I'm up to maybe working until like 3 or 4 in the morning at the latest. It's a very long day. Yeah, <laughs> 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 it goes by in a flash. <laughs> uh, I, I'm curious, um, you draw some, uh, you know, manga uh, artists are more respected maybe in Japan than comic artists are respected in North America. But you still draw some very scary, very kind of outsider kind of stuff. Do you think that the, the parents in the PTA or... <laughs> That your kids, your kids' friends' parents, uh, do they know about your work or do they think it's weird? Or are you just like, oh, that's uh, Tosan, he makes horrible, horrible things on paper? <laughs> don't seem to like suffer the same fate as anybody else. They get protected. Is that because of your own cats and you want to keep them safe?
give it to God. But I didn't. But I have cats, so maybe that feeling of like I don't want to have them come to any kind of harm like that, maybe that feeling doesn't work without me knowing it. I have a couple people who are asking what your uh, favorite story of your own is. What's your favorite work that you mm. Um, I have a short story, The Fault of Amigara. Um, yeah, I like that one a fair bit myself, you know, I think, I mean, I think I did a pretty good job with it, so. Mm -hmm. um, I also like the story I did, Hanging Blimps. And, and the one more that I like is The, the Long Dream. A lot of people are asking in different ways to talk about your influences. Yeah, I guess for movies, like um, the one, my, my favorite horror movie might be, uh, it was a huge hit when I was a little kid, um, The Exorcist. Mm. Now, that was a favorite movie of mine, it gave me a lot of, it, it left a real mark, traumatized me. <laughs> um, I also really like Suspiria. <laughs> Uh, Hammer Studios, I love the work that they were doing, like the um, Christopher Reeves Dracula, uh, and those kind of monster movies like that. When did you first start watching horror movies? Did you see The Exorcist when you were little? in elementary school, grade 6, I guess, so I'm like 11 or 12 years old. Mm. And uh, I live in the country, so I didn't get to go see it in the movie theater when it was actually playing its theatrical run, so I saw it on TV at some point. Question from Eddie Lowe. Do you think your work is romantic? I know it's very obsessive <laughs> and intense, but do you think there's romance uh, in your work? I don't think there's not romance. I don't think um, but when there is like some kind of uh, love relationship or love gets in, 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 becomes part of the story, it makes it really easy to actually write the story. Um, because when people fall in love, they kind of tend to do irrational things anyways. So they kind of um, lose their mind a little bit and, and kind of charge off in directions, which makes it easier to write the story. Do you do anything, do you ever consciously try to push yourself to draw in a different way or to... Um, I guess 
if it was to make my work not scary, that's something that I would think about, you know, consciously working on. But my readers want things that are scary from me, so I haven't really considered this question actually that much, you know. But I often have that thing where after the fact, I'll be like, oh, I should have done this, or oh, I could have taken it this way. So that happens to me a lot. Oh, would you ever want to meet Tommy in real life? <laughs> I like nice girls. I'm sure she'd be very grateful for bringing her to life. Some of your stories are based on uh, dreams, that you get good sleep, and so some of your stories are based on dreams. Are all of your stories based on dreams, or are some of them based on real people, or real life, or people that you encounter? Um, I think I get, you know, story ideas from both, like, dreams and real things, but, um, to get, like, the idea for a story from a dream is actually really rare for me. Um, it would be really nice if I had more like that, but it really only happens every, every so often. <laughs> Hanging blimps, I actually got that idea from, from a dream I had as a child. So I was maybe about five years old and I was out by myself and I was you know, standing in this place and leaning on this rope and I see this sort of really strange shape, like a human shape. And then the ropes kind of hung down like this. artists actually when they're drawing draw the eyes in uh, last. 
Uh, right now I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to leave them blank like that or actually fill them in. So. Which would be better? Blank. 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 <laughs> what, what do you think of uh, people who get their work tattooed on you? Uh, or on themselves, on themselves. <laughs> Tattoos, but uh, fan illustrations or memes and things like that. Do you get to see those? Do you like them? Yeah, I actually get um, people put that stuff up on Twitter all the time, so I actually do get to see it, and I'm always happy to. You actually run your own Twitter account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you. Oh. I keep tagging you with advertising, I'm so sorry. <laughs> How are your cats doing? Almost everyone wants to know. Um, so I did write that um, manga about my cats, Yong and Moo. Um, and unfortunately, uh, Yong has since passed away. Mm. But uh, Moo is doing fine. He's totally great, really healthy. Um, and Moo lives with my wife's family now um, because when we were moving from, uh, we moved from Gifu Prefecture to Chiba Prefecture. So we moved into a condo at that time, and when we did, Moo got really sick, like just wasn't feeling well and sort of getting worse and worse. And you know, the same, Yong died the same way, like slowly got you know sick and then passed away. So we kind of had this fear, like what if Moo dies, just keeps getting sicker and dies. So we took, we had our condo is just like a, you know, like an apartment with you no, know, just a small place. So we took Moo to my wife's family's house, which is like a two-story house, and overnight Moo was like 100% better. So we just, that's how Moo ended up moving in with my wife's family. <laughs> And now in our condo, we have uh, two cats, Tenmaru and Tongichi. Yon was a really fascinating cat and gave me a lot of things to write about in a manga. But, you know, Tenmaru and Tomichi are not that interesting. Like that. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think they're really going to turn into any good story. <laughs> well, I think, uh, are you just about wrapped up with your illustration? Are you, uh... <laughs> Thank you. Ah, no, we can't just that. Yeah, we're all good? Yeah. All right. So, thank you very much for illustrating. All right. So, I'd like to thank Ido Sensei for drawing for us today. This is still half finished, so we don't have enough time to do the whole thing. Oh. We, maybe we could put it up, you can put it up on Twitter later. Uh, we could we could all see it. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Oh. Yeah.
Okay, once it's finished, I will, I will finish it. And <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Jackson, for coming.